Good, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Qdabra's webinar today. Uh, this is Patrick. I'm the project manager here at Qdabra and um, also the founder. And I am happy to say that today, actually yesterday, was our 18th anniversary. Uh, we started, I started the company in uh, September of 2003. It seems like forever ago. Um, I'm, I'm really thrilled to have you here today. Uh, we're going to show you this critical technique uh, for migrating your forms. And uh, we also have a customer who's going to do a testimonial uh, or, or actually talk about what the process was like for, for her. Um, and uh, uh, so just to get started, um, welcome to our webinar. Uh, Mel Clemente is our senior forms designer, and she is uh, the one who is uh, gets all the credit for today's demo preparation. And uh, Mel, um, can you say a few words? Yes, I'm happy to be your presenter again today. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, I hope you go, you don't get tired of my voice here, but I'm excited to just keep teaching you what we have for you, especially in this topic of migration, which everybody is I guess interested in, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you share your screen? Let's just look at the first few slides and um, we'll uh, so we're going to do, do this in a couple different parts today. We're going to um, just to kind of tell you what we're going to talk what our main theme today is migration and um, that that is moving forms from one place to another. So this is critical when you're moving forms from SharePoint on-prem to online you know, 365. It all, it's also really important when you're dealing with like SharePoint 2010 to SharePoint 2013 on-prem. So there's different ways of migration and we even we even think migration is really important when you're just developing in, in one place because you've got you typically a test or development environment. Um, and can you go to the next slide, Mel? I think you're sharing that. Great. Yeah, so we've got these these kind of uh, um, key techniques for you today. We're going to talk about what the, what the most important step in the migration process is, which is is making your data connections dynamic. Uh, unfortunately, in, in InfoPath, um, you know, the data connections are hard coded. You can do relative UDCX kind of data connections, but they don't they don't migrate very well because the UDCX files also live on a place. They live on that on, usually on the server where the form is deployed. And so when you're migrating from InfoPath to Qdabra Forms, or when you're migrating from point A to point B, the data connections is really the the most important uh, thing that you need to worry about. And uh, we're going to show you how to, to quickly add those, uh, make your data connections dynamic so that you don't have to do that anymore. So that's the key, the key takeaway for today's web webinar. Um, Mel, can you go to the next slide? So this, once again, this is important for these different scenarios. Uh, the scenario where you're moving to the cloud, the scenario where you're moving off of InfoPath, the scenario where you've got a, a production process and you're developing a new, a new form and you need to move things from dev to test to production without having to worry about changing the underlying template. So Mel, I'm going to share out my screen real quick and just kind of give people a quick uh, reference to um, what we did in July. So we actually um, we actually had a webinar we did in July. So hopefully you can see my screen here. Um, let me know if you can see it, Mel. Yes, I can see Great. YouTube. So okay. YouTube, YouTube channel, uh, you just go to youtube.com, Kidabra, and on July 15th, we uh, gave a presentation. We talked about migrating forms uh, from InfoPath to the cloud using Kidabra forms. And here is the presentation. Let me just quickly walk you through it. Basically, this presentation um, had a, kind of a planning guide. Here's what you need to do. Uh, you need to figure out how many forms you're going to migrate, um, where your content is, how many different sites. And then when you start migrating, you need to fix up your forms. So we're really kind of focusing in on that fix up forms, that middle step today, and, and that second bullet, fixing data connections. That's really the key thing. But there are also other things you may want to do when you migrate, such as making your form look better and, um, and so on. So now let's actually go uh, quickly through and talk about, um, uh, let's actually quickly do the demo first, and then we'll switch and introduce Suzanne and ask her how her process went. Uh, so I'm going to switch back to you. Great. So here we are in our on-prem site. Here I'm just going to open one of our sample forms. This donations uh, donation dashboard. 
it queries data from a list on the same site, so that instantly loads and it again gets data from a list here in the um, on-prem site. Right here, I opened the debug pane at the bottom there, and here we can see that its host URL is coming from our Q SharePoint 2013, which is again our on-prem site. But then um, we we'll look at this form version, and it's um, 0.90 there. But then if I switch over to our Office 365 site, the um, online SharePoint online, and open the same template with the same version here, exactly the same template versions there, and I open it. Let's see what happens. So it also loads the, the data without, you know, without any changes needed. Actually, the changes are all there. The data connections are already ready dynamic. If I look into the debug, here now we'll see that the host URL is pointing to our Office 365 site. And yeah. So can, so. You, can you quickly <laughs> show them what it's doing on load and what are the commands down below? It's, it's actually getting the URL for the site, right? Yeah, so get into on there. And then how many data connections is it loading? Is it how many does it just have one query? Is that is that it? Just one list, yeah. The do okay. data the donations list. Okay, so it's a pretty simple data, it's a pretty simple form. It only has one data connection in it, right? Yeah. Okay, great. So that and, and it, it can you switch back to the other one that you showed and show the, the how the commands look on that too? So it's the same set of commands, it's just that the results were different in there. Yeah. Okay, got it. So it fixed mm -hmm. it up to the right side and then and of course, this assumes that list is on the new site. So that's really critical that if you don't have the list there, it's gonna fail, right? Right. Okay, cool. Great. Well, th thanks for that quick uh, demo, Mel. We're gonna come back to you and, and see how, how to do it. But first, um, I'd like to welcome Suzanne King. He, uh, she is one of our customers and she has recently, um, uh, I guess you've recently performed a, a kind of a migration. You, you went from InfoPath to Kitab Reforms on-prem um, Suzanne, I'm going to, uh, I think you can unmute yourself, but do, do you want to? Yeah, I'm, I'm unmuted. <laughs> yeah, just, just wanted to um, say hello and, and ask you to maybe uh, say a few words about how the process went uh, for, sure. for your company. Sure. Um, thank you, Patrick, and happy anniversary. <laughs> um, okay, so we had about 30 forms that we needed to convert. Uh, we are on prem um, and going to go to the cloud soon, so I'm very interested in, in this webinar as well. So um, in the middle of converting and um, migrating to Forms Viewer, we had a, a patch that happened with Microsoft that made us kind of have to uh, decrease our amount of time that we had to spend on this, but um, overall, it was uh, a good experience. Um, still there? Yeah, I just oh, okay. Center. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Patrick and his team were very helpful, and they provided us with lots of tools. So the tool to convert the UDCX files um, worked very well um, because we had a lot of those. Most of our data connections were UDCX files. Um, and then uh, we had a lot of, um, I needed the help team a lot during, during this time and became really good friends with Hillary and others. Um, <laughs> so uh, everybody was very responsive. So that was really awesome. I mean, you, that, started, you started like in June, I want to say, maybe end of May. Yeah. And, and yeah. how many forms? You said 30 forms and, and you got them all, them all migrated. Are they all live yeah. in the new environment? I am making the last two little forms live this weekend, and then I have one giant form that I'm still developing. Awesome. Do, you, um, do you have any, any, you want to show people one of your forms that you're, you're yeah, sure. That's I've got a couple of them because I just wanted to show, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. just trying to get to the right spot where I want to be. Okay, here's my, show my screen. Okay, so this is just a real simple form. Let me know when you can see it. Yep, I can see it. Okay, so this was a real simple form. I did put a little bit of bells and whistles on it. Um, I added the um, debug slider, uh, which is very helpful uh, when you, you know, we, we kind of hide it from everybody else, but the, the developers can see it. And you've got so your, that, and, and you, you get the dynamic data connections there too. I can see it right there, the first command, you get the input. 
yeah yeah we've got some yeah. some good data connections going on the one thing that we did a little different is we put all of our resource files which are the CSS files and the jQuery and the J, uh, JavaScript, we put those kind of centralized. Um, and your team helped with that, you know, getting that all set up for us so that if we wanted to change some CSS, we would only have to change it once as opposed to go to every form and, and change that. That's a really cool idea. We need to do a webinar on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, the other thing I added on here was uh, field validation which is very helpful and um, that way if they forget to fill out a form because the little little red star just isn't that helpful and before we had everything highlighted yellow that they had to fill out and I just hated the way it looked um, so uh, by having the, the field validation uh, we we're able to make this a quicker and nice nicer looking form I think and the other thing I wanted to show was how quick it actually loads. Um, I think it's almost like a second. Oh, that's but, great. Wow. So, wow. yeah, it loads Yeah, it loads very nicely. Uh, well, it seemed like it was loading faster before I was on the webinar, but that's okay. <laughs> what, what was it like before you moved to Forms here? Uh, I'm really not sure on this form because it's uh, not one that I develop, but I would, I would guess it was probably three seconds at least three or four so it's definitely faster it's definitely faster and, and baker bots is a major law firm in the houston area is that right yeah we have around 1500 employees um and we're uh international so we have people using the forms in you know other countries as well so this is one form i kind of wanted to show just because i threw everything at it <laughs> I have the hamburger, which will slide in and out this little area. Now, um, after developing it and showing it to the customer for so long, they're like, oh, we want that little panel open once you load the form. I was like, okay. So I had to go into the CSS, figure out how to do that, and, and it's working just fine, or into the JavaScript, actually. And so um, the other things I did with this... Uh, Let's see, I've added these little next buttons. And okay, so here's the next little kind of bells and whistle is the search. I'm not gonna search for one of our clients, but I will search for one of our uh, lawyers. Um, and so you just have to put in a few letters, enter, and it then finds it and you select it. And that's going to DBXL. So I um, created a query in DBXL, created a, um, what are the Where are data, data source? Yeah, data connection. I can't even think. And um, to the to DBXL, and it works great. It makes the form load much faster because we don't have to load up all of the um, lawyers, and every single time it would have to load load all of the lawyers, and that would just be mm -hmm. it would slow the it slowed the form down tremendously. So this helps make it a lot faster. And the clients works the same way. It just um, searches our client database. That's great. That's great. Um, so then another thing I threw at that, well, I have field validation on that. So if somebody puts in uh, letters here, it'll validate. If they put in, a, uh, you know, $500, it'll validate. And then if they finally go over $1,000, it'll take it. So that's helpful. I'm trying to think of the other cool things. We have this as a searching our um, CRM. So we could just do Texas bar, do a search. So that's connecting with an that's API. Fast. That's fast. And that's the data yeah. query again as well, right? Uh, no, this is an API actually. Okay. okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So that does that. So we've got a little bit of everything going on here. So I think that's great. Um, like yeah. The, people are pretty happy that cut, the users are, are okay type in the three characters and tabbing out they're not well this will be the first time it's not like this is the one i'm still developing so it's not live yet our cut the people that are, are um you know kind of rolling it out to the lawyers have tested it and they haven't seem to have a problem with it the only thing they do have a problem with um is let's say i come here and like i did barkley mm -hmm. um and there's only one just just as a little thing for you guys to think about uh, if there's only one, they would like for it to be selected automatically. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. 
Any questions? So, yeah, this is great, Suzanne. This is uh, thank you so much for for being here today in our webinar. Yeah. Um, but it's been it's been um, you know tedious to get it all done, but uh, with the help of your people and uh, team, and uh, you know their dedication as well, it's it's made it a lot smoother and a lot easier on me. And you know, That's Hillary great. can talk me down <laughs> when I get when I get frantic. That's great to hear. Um, any questions for Suzanne before we uh, go back to Mel and, and see how to add these data, make these data connections dynamic? Any anyone have any? Questions. Uh, if if you would like to um, to be on our webinar in the future, um, please let me know. We're, we'd be happy to have you demo one of your forms to everyone else. Uh, make it real. Um, so I guess we don't have any questions, Suzanne. But I just want to thank you again for for being here today and, and a wonderful uh, um, kind of overview of, of the process that you guys went through of moving those thirty forms over. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing I did do um, is I kind of just for the other developers, I kind of you guys have great documentation as well. So I kind of like summed it up and, you know, these are the steps you have to take when you're when you're converting a form. Oh, so yeah, that would if be that great. helps do, at do all. You that? Do, you yeah. have, do you want to show that? Uh, I'd have to find it, Patrick. I can't remember. <laughs> we'll come back to it in the webinar. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, it does I'm become second it. nature. It does become second nature. Once you've done a few of them, it, you know, at first you're like, oh my gosh, there's so many little steps that ha you have to take. But, you know, what what started out taking an hour or two to convert a form took 30 minutes, you know. So mm -hmm. it does become second nature. That's great to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, wonderful. That's right, well, thank you so much. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Um, sure. And if you do have that that, that to summary, you want to say email me to it me or so whatever, that'd be great too. I'd love to. Okay. Right. It, it may not be perfect, but there you go. It'll be there. Great. All right. All right. Thanks again. Um, Mel, Mel, back to you. Um, you want to walk people through how to make these data connections dynamic? Sure, yeah, I'd love to. So we have two ways actually here. We can manually add the rules, which I'll show you more in more detail. And we also provided this, uh, we're, we're gonna provide this reusable XML template for the XDP to make your lives easier, right? So let me just show you an example of a form that we have that has that XDP. But before I show you that, let me show you um, the template that doesn't have it. So this one is I'm in the on-prem site and this form has data connections to my online site, to my Office 365 site. And let's just see what happens here on form load. We get this error because it's trying to get the categories from the site, from the my online, my Office 365 site, whereas it's published in my on-prem site, right? So the adding the XTP get, gets rid of this error message. So then when I look at my and template here, which already has that dynamic data connections XDP, no more errors here. And it instantly loads, it loaded this uh, this categories list here, which I changed uh, the drop down options to come from that list. And if I look at the commands here, we can see all the commands that the XDP had, and these are ran. Um, it even has the ability to change the submit URL to automatically point to the SharePoint library that is present in wherever site you open the form from. So the key thing is for forms to be able to detect which environment you're trying to open the forms from, and that's with the help of the get input parameter command, which determines the host URL, like right here, and then changes the connection based on that host URL using the change connection URL command, and for any queries, right? And then the change submit URL for any submit. And these are just right? rules so, in your form, right? You're just adding these as rules um, that set the QROLs command field, is that right? Yeah, setting the QROLs command field, but the uh, the XDP already has all those rules. Can, uh, just yeah, can a couple you show modifications. What it looks like those commands, how, how, they, how they actually show up in the. Okay. So that's the XTP and here let's just open the end template for that expense report form. So if I go into KDAB rules, so here it says run dynamic VCs. So just set the XTP nodes. XTP node, this one here to, to trigger that. And here are the commits. Here, so here's our get input parameter. 
um, setting the SharePoint site URL, and then we change the connections using setting another node here, which then has these rules that you just need to enable and disable. So there are documentations. There's a documentation on how to use this, and we'll provide it in the sample. How long template. do you think it takes in general to? I mean, we've got this XTP for customers that have forms with lots of data connections. If they just had one or two data connections, is that overkill? I mean, would they just be better off doing it manually? Yeah, if they're, the form only has one or two data connections, we don't, I don't recommend using this, going through this um, entire page of documentation to use the XTP, all right? You can just manually add it, which I'll, I want to focus actually on to teach you how to easily add those rules if you only have a couple of data connections. But in this case, the expense report form is get user profile by name. There's a SharePoint library and uh, a list data connection there. So this can be a good candidate of you, where you want to use that XDP with less effort. Okay. So uh, let, me, let me show you the, the nation's dashboard. This, that's where I want to um, show you how you can manually add the rules, but I'm not going to start from scratch here. I'm just going to show you um, in detail what this form is doing. So in form load, the, uh, we want the, the form to be able to determine the environment. Are you in dev? Are you in on-prem Office 365, right? So that's the first rule that we're checking here. And then we're changing whatever connection uh, connections are there before we actually query the list, right? So in this case, I'm querying the donations list. And before I do that, I change the list data connections. So determining the environment, if I might go to my form logic node here again, right here. So you want to add like this kind of, we're centralizing the, the logic. So we have these form logic nodes to, it's a lot easier and less maintenance this way. So we set this node to just trigger, and then we have the host URL node and then an environment. So we determine the um, host URL again by using the get input parameter, you use this key and it returns your your host URL, obviously. So here I'm just uh, adding the set case command just because some sites can have different casing and you might end up uh, having issues determining your actual environment if you're in dev versus prod and whatnot. So then I'm just using the the this command here to make sure that everything's in lower. I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, but we used to use a translate command. Right. Just, when, know, did, when did we oh. add set case? That's a new command. Oh, it's been a long time. So yeah, and then we set the environment to um, dynamically. This is one of the dynamic rules in there. We set the dynamic, the environment from where the site location, where this site is equal to whatever I got from that host URL. Okay, I'm going to show you the form logic behind this. Actually, I should have it ready, but um, let me just export that real quick for you. I deleted it before. Here. here we go. So here I just have these two nodes where I enter my site location. So these are my, um, yeah, this is simulating two different um, environment, my test and my prod. So here you'll see they are in different URLs. And that's actually in the, my third third agenda today, which is being, being able to switch between environments. So that's why I have those kind of environment and host URL and whatnot. So that's just, uh, that also falls into the bonus. But again, but back here, after you determine your environment, so to speak, uh, you go back to the change connection URL here, change list, uh, cha uh, changing the list connection. So all of the, all there is to it is just passing in the parameters, the data connection name, which is donations, and then your host URL, which you dynamically obtained from that previous rule, and then the name of your list, which is required in cases where you're changing a, a list data connection. Can you show the, the, uh, the command in uh, the command builder and just, just to give people an idea of where they would go to figure out what the parameters for change connection URL are? In the design? The design? Yeah. 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 Classic designer. We we also have this mm -hmm. uh, the new beta designer, which which has the the dynamic data connection XTP in it. I'll show that after Mel's done here. 
Um, but if you are wondering, well, you're not quite sure how to create these commands, we have this command builder here that you can use to, to quickly uh, create the, the string, the command string that you would then use in the rule. And that's what Mel is yeah. doing right here. Cool. Yeah, so it's pointing these guys to where they should be. And at the bottom here, it's automatically providing you the actual awesome. string and the string dynamic stuff to them. Now, you said mm -hmm. that you were, you were going to show a bonus of uh, how you yeah. go from test to prod, but I, you have these URLs hard coded in the form logic. And that's kind of what we're trying to get away from. So I'm kind of confused. Yeah, actually, um, there could be different, uh, different approach to how your environments are set up. So in this case, I have this because I have different uh, subsites for my different environments, but there could be something like training slash uh, forms dev versus training slash forms. Right. In that case, you won't need you won't need this hard coded thing. You just append the host URL, the dynamic host URL that you got and append it with the actual environment value. Right. So in this just in this scenario, I need to I can't obtain this dynamically. If you may, but let me show you how that works in the in the browser here in the forms viewer. So here I am opening it from our 1908 site. I showed this is not on the, the nation's dashboard is what I want. So yeah. So this is coming from the 20 of the 1908 forms viewer site. And here I set one of the items to this. So we know that it's coming from test. So if I look into the debug here, it says our environment is test, right? And it's F coming from FB1908. But I have this button here that says switch to prod because right now I'm on test. But if I click on that, now my environment changes to prod. And my site here is now FB2004. And one of the items I changed from, from prod just for me to know that it's actually coming from prod. But the, um, the, the idea is I have these site assets, these lists existing in both sites, my site A and my site B, and I can play with different data. I don't want to touch the production data because it's live, right? But I have this tiny change that I made into the template that I want to be able to test before I actually launch it to prod. So I, I do this first. Do the debug. So you're testing yeah. prod in the form that's opening from, te from tests. So it's like the, the, you're, you're basically having the form point to the prod site so you can just test the data. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Using the, the template. It's a template create playing around with different yeah. sets of data. Hmm? Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Any questions yeah. for Mel? I, I know you uh, did everything, Mel, but we've been doing this dynamic data connection stuff for quite a long time. It was the first. Uh, in fact, let me just quickly share out my screen and just show uh, everyone the forms designer here. This is a, uh, we're hoping to finish up the forms designer uh, soon. And what that means is 1.0. Right now, um, we demoed this. This is available. You can download it, install it. And you'll notice that there is dynamic data connections here in the forms designer. So the only XTP that we've baked in right now is that dy dynamic data connection. And um, if you click on it, um, I believe, let me just see if I can uh, put my cursor somewhere where I can add it here. I don't know if where, where to add it. It doesn't really matter. I um, can click add here. Okay, so I guess maybe it's already been added to this template. But um, if you haven't added it, it will add it, and then you can um, go through and see the instructions. Now these instructions are not quite as good as what we're going to send you with uh, with the webinar package uh, and, the, and the presentation, the slides. We've got a, a little better PDF, um, but this is just kind of a backup um, to, to walk you through it. These are steps you need to take to fix up the data connections. I, I guess it would take about 10 minutes, Mel, but what's your guess? Is 20 minutes, is that is that the range, 10 to 20 minutes? I don't think so. Yeah, 10 to 20 minutes. And this, we, we did feature this during our uh, training in April. So if you have the forms designer and you want to actually walk through it, 
Uh, you can go to our downloads page here, and on the right, uh, Key Performance 2021, this is this first lab that we did in this training was to uh, introduce the form designer and, and do the data connection. That's the second lab, I guess. So you can download this and walk through that, and there's videos on this as well. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, doesn't look like we have any questions. Um, so Mel, I, I want to thank you again for presenting this wonderful webinar we did today, and um, thank you, Suzanne, for being here. And I um, hope everyone has a great day. We'll do this again uh, in a couple weeks. We're going to be talking, maybe we'll talk about centralizing CSS. That's a great idea, Suzanne. <laughs> and um, I hope everyone has a great day. Uh, yeah, let us know if you need help on the migrations, or if you got a new form you want to add some extra stuff to, we'd be happy to, to help you. Thanks again. Take care. Yeah, take care, everybody. Thanks, Patrick.